don't praise because there's none like unto him. There's none to be compared with him. There's none to be exalted like him. There's none to be given praise to like him. Worship the King of glory this evening. Oh, give praise to him this evening. Somebody needs to worship God this evening. Somebody needs to give praise to God this evening. You're thinking and you're asking, oh, I ask of these, I have not received it. Give praise to him for that. Give him praise. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Give him praise because he is good. Worship him because there's no like unto him. Worship him because he is the I am that I am. He is the one that was, he is the one that is, and he is the one that is to come. Give God praise from the depth of your heart. Worship him. Look back into this year. So many people have passed away. So many accidents. So many, so many things that have happened to people. So many innocent people that have been caught in the net of the evil one. Oh, but you and I, we are alive today. We are saved. God has been our protector. God has been our provider. It's not your job. It's not your business. It's not the money you have in your bank that has provided for you. It's God in heaven. He's the one that makes us richer. He's the one who's that teaches us to, to make profit. He's the come. one that teaches us how to go about things. Oh, give God praise this evening. Worship him for his goodness. Worship him for his kindness. Worship him from the depth of your heart. Let everything in you give God praise at this moment. Give God praise. Worship him from the depth of your heart because he is the king of kings. He is the lord of lords. He is the ancient of days. He is the I am that I am. He is the one that was. He is the one that is and there is to come. So. He is the one that parts the Red Sea. So. Oh, even at his presence, the mountain so. skips. Oh, God of heaven, we worship you. We oh, bless your holy name. We say thank you, Father. Thank you, King of glory. We give you all the praise. We worship you, Father. From the depth of our hearts, we say thank you. Thank you, Abba, Father. Thank you, King of kings. Thank you, Lord of lords. Thank you, ancient of days. Oh, for keeping me alive. For keeping me in you. Thank you for not leaving me, Lord, for not keeping me, for not leaving me to to the enemy, for keeping me in your in your presence. Thank you, Father. I worship and adore your name. I exalt your holy name. I bless your name, Father. Thank you because of your faithfulness. Thank you because of your goodness. Thank you because of your kindness. Oh, thank you for the works that you have done in my life, in my family, in the ministry. God, I give you praise. Oh, Jesus, thank you. We worship your name. I worship your name, Father. Oh, God of heaven, I say thank you for your protection upon my life, for your protection upon my family, for your love, for your mercy, for your grace. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you. You, Almighty God, for the things that you have done, for the things you are yet to do, even for the things that you will not do that we ask of, because we trust in you and we know that you know all things. Oh, Father, blessed be your name, oh God. I worship you. I exalt your holy name. I give you praise, oh Father. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Amen. In the spirit of thanksgiving, we're going to thank God for the ministry, for the church of God. He said, upon this rock I build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail over it. We're going to worship the name of the Lord for the ministry at large, for the for, for from, from our general superintendent to our, our regional overseer, to our state overseers, to our, our location pastors, even to, to the sectional leaders, we're going to worship God for the things that he is doing in this ministry. The yes. gates of hell has not been able to prevail in the yes, ministry. No. God has been taking Mighty us from God one height to another. No, oh, if you look three. to the children ministry, oh, God has been taking us from one height to another. To the youth ministry, God has been taking us from one height to another. Even the young adult ministry, ah, I can tell you, God has been taking us from one height to another. We're going to worship the name of the Lord, bless the name of the Lord for the things that he has done for this ministry. Even this year, for the souls that have been converted, for the souls because the, key, the Bible says that when one soul comes to heaven, comes, comes to Christ, there is celebration, there is jubilation in heaven. Oh, look at the numbers of people that have given their life to Christ through this ministry even this year. In India, in Nigeria, in America, in Europe, oh, Father, we worship you. For this ministry, for Deeper Life Bible Church, we say thank you. For the things that you have done, oh, Jesus, we say thank you. For protecting all our ministers, we say thank you. For keeping them, oh God, God, we say thank you. For protecting and providing for them, we say thank you. For your spirit upon them, we say thank you. For the wisdom and for the knowledge, for you opening your mind to them so they can see 
This is your plan. This is your plan. Thank you for the vision. Oh Lord, thank you for the empowerment. Oh Lord, all over the globe now, there's hardly no country. There's hardly no country, no big city. That's that deeper life is not far. Oh mighty God, it is your dream. It is your dream. We thank you, oh Lord. We thank you for your blessing for all those that you are mute, oh mighty Father. Oh Lord, we have a blessing. We have a blessing. We have a blessing. God, we know. God, the world is waiting. God, we say, oh Lord, for only one. We want to show that is war. Enjoy the heaven. God, for when we are talking about millions of souls that are being in every day, our joy will be over. In heaven, oh God, before the angel, before Jesus Christ, before the Father, our joy will be over. Angel 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 will be over. Before, I will all see us in heaven. Oh, Lord, in the gate of oh, Lord, to prevail over the ministry. All our leaders to prevail over the ministry. Every them to contribution. Every contribution of the servant. 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 concerning the, uh, the, the retreat that we're, that we're experiencing at the moment. We're going to pray that even today, even today, that God will perform his miracle. Amen. That God will perform miracles. There will be signs Amen. and wonders. There Amen. will be signs and wonders. We're going to commit our ministers into the hands of the Lord. Uh, we're going to start with with the general superintendent that as the word will come that the word will, will will meet us at the point of our needs that you and i we will not miss out of today's blessings let us pray Amen. father we commit our pastor into your hands oh lord the the, the general superintendent who is praying and asking oh father god of heaven that you will speak to him today in the name of jesus you will speak to him oh god as you have been using him in time past oh god of heaven we pray and we ask that even tonight tonight oh father you will speak to him to meet us at the point of our needs, oh God, to meet us at the 
their spiritual needs, to meet our spiritual needs, to meet our physical needs, to meet every need of our lives. Oh God of heaven, you will use your servants listening. You will use him, oh God, to touch us, oh God, where it most keep us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You will use your servants listening, oh God of heaven, by your power, oh God, you are anointing like never before. The words will come with power and with authority. The words will come with fire to burn everything that needs to be born in our lives in the name of Jesus. Oh, we pray and we ask, Father God of heaven, that you will use him, oh God of heaven, oh Lord, to speak to our hearts today, to speak to our souls today, to speak to our spirits today in the name of Jesus, oh God. You are anointing like never before. You are in the unction will be pressed upon him like never before. That even those of us that are listening to the message that, that are releasing again, the word will come with power and with authority. The word will come with signs and with wonders. That the word will come as if you have never heard him spoke the truth before. That the word will come with the power from on high. It will come with authority from on high. And it will meet us at the point of our needs. It will bring light to that part of our life. It will bring power to every big side of us, oh God. That you will empower us with the word today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We commit our written overseer into your hands, oh Lord. We pray and we ask that as he comes to speak, oh God, you are anointed. Him like never before, Advice, the power of God Advice, of heaven will come, will Advice, flow through him in the name of Jesus, oh God. You will speak through him, oh God. You will give him the unction of the function in the name of Jesus, oh God. That the word comes, oh God, it will come with authority, it will come with power, it will come with anointing, it will come with the grace that comes and breaks the yoke and the chains that bounds men in the name of Jesus, oh God. Of heaven will pray and we tonight. Come by the power of darkness, by the angels of heaven, to a day. You will deliver. The word will come in power. The word will come in power. In the name of Jesus, I pray and I ask for God. Let fire come with the word. Let the fire that consumes, that burns, let it come with the word. In the name of Jesus, O God, to burn everything that is not of your own in us. To burn everything that is contrary to your will in us. To burn everything that makes us weak in us. O God of heaven, let your word come with us. O Lord, use your ministers this evening. Use your, your servants, let me be. Use your sons, let me be. Oh God of heaven, use them, them oh God, to meet us where we need to be. Those that are weak, those that are depressed, let the words be everyone tonight in the name of Jesus. There are many that will be connected, oh Spirit of the living God, you will meet everyone tonight in the name of Jesus. That tonight will be a night of encounter. Tonight will be a night of transformation. Tonight will be the night that seeks. Sickness will be taken away, that barrenness will be rolled away in the name of Jesus. That everything that has stand between us and our progress, that has stand between us and our, and, and our breakthrough, that tonight with the word that will come, the power of the Holy Ghost will cover it, will come with it, and it will break the chains, it will break the yokes, every barrier in our ways. The God of heaven will use your servant to the Lord to break those chains in the name of Jesus. Oh, Spirit of the living God, we ask that you empower them, you envelope them with the power, envelope them with your anointing in the name of Jesus. That as they speak, oh God, they will speak with power. They will speak with power. They will speak with power in the name of Jesus. The words will come. And oh, signs will follow, signs will follow in the name of Jesus. Oh God of heaven, I pray and I ask, O oh, King of Glory, that you will anoint them, anoint them, that the way you anointed Jesus with power, oh God, anoint your servants with your like, God, like never before in the name of Jesus, oh Father. I cannot say I Jesus. Thank you, Father, I worship you. Anoint them with your power, God, in the name of Jesus. Let your power. Let the power that helps me be in the name of Jesus, oh God, I speak and I ask this evening, you will use your servants this evening to meet us where we need help in the name of Jesus. Do it, oh Father, in Jesus' name we are praying. Do it yourself, oh God, amen. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Lastly, we're going to commit ourselves into the hands of the Lord. You have come before the presence of the living God. What's, what's, what are your needs? What are you trusting God for? 
What are you trusting God for? You know, Anna went, went before the God of heaven and she asked for something from the God of heaven and God that never disappoints. He answered, Hannah, what have you come to the presence of God for? Don't mm. just see it as I'm just here to connect. I'm just here to just uh, mark, mark my attendance. No, you've come to the presence of the living God. What is that thing you're trusting God for in the lives of your children, in the lives of your parents, in your ministry, in your own life, in the works of your hands, in everything that pertains to you? In, uh, what, what's that thing that you're asking of God for? What is that thing that you are trusting God for? What is that thing that you have that that, that you can't even share with, uh, with with other people? That you can't even share with your pastor, even with your spouse, and you are trusting God and you say, God, if only you can do this, if only you can do this for me. Tonight can be that night. Tonight can be the day that God answers that prayer. Open your mouth and ask God this evening. Trust Him. Trust Him. Ask, ask with faith. Ask with faith. Ask of expectation in you that I am asking God of you. I'm asking God. God, I know you never fail. You never fail. And the God that never fail, that never disappoints, will answer you. He will meet you at the point of your needs in the name of Jesus. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, seek tonight. Seek. You will find it. You will find it. Knock on that door tonight. Tonight, tonight, the spirit of the living God is here tonight. He's here. He's here to open doors. He's here to break chains. He's here to set people free. What is that thing that you are asking God for? What is that thing you are trusting God for? Ask him this evening. Ask him this evening. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I bless you. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We bless you for this opportunity you have given unto us to come before your presence and to table our request. Lord God of heaven, we pray and we ask, Lord, that even as we continue, that your spirit will continue with us. Amen. That tonight will be a night of encounter. Mm -hmm. Tonight will be a night of transformation. Mm -hmm. You will perform your wonders and everything that we have trusted you for, that we've been trusting you for, everything that we've been looking up unto you for, even tonight, you will give answers to them in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. We commit the, the, the servants of God that God will be using tonight, we commit them into the hands of the Lord, into the hands of the living Lord, and we we'll pray and we ask, Father, you will use them like never before. Mm -hmm. You will use them this evening, that they themselves will know that God has done something truly. And every one of us will be partaker of tonight's blessings in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. For those that are not here, that should be here, we pray and we ask that God, you will remind them and you will bring them so that the blessings that you have in store for them, they will not miss. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, we will continue by singing from uh, the hymn, uh, Born Fire of God. Born Fire of God, my ransom soul possessing, pure fire thou art. And I would do, dwell in thee, light of my life, true source of every blessing. Grant all my days one only fire of flame to be. Born fire of God, thy own love transcending. Let all I hold be thine, and thine alone. Heart, mind, and will, a sacrifice ascending, consumed by fire from out thy uh, fairy throne. We listen to the hymn from Song of Songs.
Amen. I pray that God's fire will continue to burn in each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Mm. Uh, at this moment, we're going to listen to the first GS message for tonight, and our media team will help us with that. If you're still awake, I said, praise the Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. And thank you, Lord, for your power that you manifest according to your promise. I will pray, Lord, this time, as we hear your word, it will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. God shows, reveal to us the things we have not known. And the things we have known we are forgetting. Reveal more to us in Jesus' name. Amen. And let the word bear fruit in every life. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're talking about Jesus, Emmanuel, the Son of God, the Savior, the Sanctifier. Now we come to Emmanuel, Jesus, the Healer. Emmanuel, Jesus, the Healer. In Matthew chapter 8, Reading from verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Hmm. We're considering healing. From the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. We're considering healing in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And here we find Emmanuel, Jesus, healing. And it says the servant of the centurion was healed in the self same hour. That's the result of the contact of the centurion with Christ. The centurion came to Christ. The centurion was humble. Humble because he said, I am not worthy. That's part of the condition of the healing that God gives. And he said, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. He believed in the final authority, in the efficacy of the word of Christ, the healer that comes before the healing. Humility on the one hand, faith that asserts, affirms, confirms the authority of Christ, the healer. And the Lord said, be done unto thee as thou hast believed. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it says, And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Christ had perfect understanding. He knew that some of the people that were brought to him, the sicknesses were caused by evil spirits. And he cast out the evil spirit, others. He healed that had no connection with evil spirit. He cast out the spirit with his word. There's no other means 
and there is no other weapon but the word of the Lord. And he healed all that was sick. Verse 17. In verse 17, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. The healing of the, of the Lord comes as a result of fulfilling the prophecy. It's not in isolation. All that have been written about Christ, the prophecy, the prediction, the promise that this is what Christ will do. He does that not because of our feeling, not because of our passion. He heals, not because of, Lord, look at who I am. No, he heals because of the fulfillment of the prophecy that had been declared before him, saying, himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. We're looking at three things as we talk about Emmanuel, Christ, Jesus, the healer. Number one, the beginning of divine healing before Emmanuel's arrival. Hmm. In the Old Testament, before he arrived, before he came, there was healing. And as you go back to the Old Testament, from the beginning to the end, you'll find Jesus, before he came, had known that healing had been there done by the Father. The beginning of divine healing before Emmanuel's arrival. Number two, the boundlessness of divine healing, definite healing, with Emmanuel's anointing. He came, and he came with anointing. He came with power, and the anointing upon him made him to heal everywhere, every form of sickness, and the healing, definite healing that they brought was boundless. Number three, the blessing of desired healing after Emmanuel's ascension, before his advent, before his arrival, healing. During his time here on earth, with anointing, healing. After he went back to heaven, after his ascension, healing continued to take place because of the stripes of Christ the Lord. We're coming to number one. Number one, the beginning of divine healing before Emmanuel's arrival. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O Testament, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Verse 2. In verse 2, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. In the Old Testament, they had benefits. Benefits from the Lord. Benefits from the grace of God. Benefits of forgiveness, benefits of salvation, benefits of holy heart, benefits of sanctification, the benefit of walking in with the Lord, and the benefit of healing and deliverance. They added to in the Old Testament, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, who oh, forgive all thine iniquities, great benefit, and who heal all thy diseases. It wasn't just doctrine. It was the experience of having the forgiveness of sin, 
and the healing of diseases. And you say, he says there, all thy diseases. And actually, in the Old Testament, and in the New Testament, there is no differentiation or distinction. That one is great. That one is small. That sickness has been there for a long time. That sickness is old age sickness. That sickness is a kind of hereditary sickness. Nothing like that. All the diseases, he healed them. Look at Exodus chapter 15. Verse 26, in Exodus chapter 16, verse 26, And said, hey, thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. So start with, there are people who believe that you cannot keep all the commandments of the Lord. There are people who believe that the child of God, the believer, is so weak, he cannot hear, he cannot do, he cannot observe, he cannot obey the commandment of God. They charge God as a taskmaster that demands from his children, from the believers, what he knows is impossible. Let all men be liars. Let those doubters be liars. God is true. If we want relationship with him, and if we want the benefit that he provides from him, he says he demands that we diligently hearken him to the voice of the Lord our God, and that we do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to the commandments of the Lord and keep and keep and keep all his statutes. Then it says, I will not put any of the diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. He gives condition. He says, My power is not cheap. My healing is not cheap. And you don't pay with money. You come to him with a humble heart, a listening ear, and a, a life that wants to do the commandments of the Lord, which means then, my brother, my sister, let's think through. If somebody devotes his life to sinning, if somebody devotes his life to contradicting the law of God, the law that he has given, even for our flesh, even for our body, and he's misusing his flesh, misusing his body, and he's saying healing, healing is coming. No, we don't treat the scriptures aright. We must not give our flesh to sinfulness, to disobedience, to unrighteousness, and to the works of the flesh. We must not. We live according to his word. And then he says, if your life is different from the life of the Egyptians, I will put none of those diseases that are brought upon Egypt upon, I will not bring upon you because I am the Lord that healeth thee. We're looking at Exodus chapter 23. And we're reading from verse 25. Exodus chapter 23, 
verse 25 and ye shall serve the lord your god and you remember serving the lord your god depart ye depart ye from iniquity all that bear the vessels of the lord we serve the lord in righteousness in holiness all the days of our life if we come with the right mind with the right attitude and with a purged purified heart ye shall serve the lord your god if we have grace to serve god with reverence and godly fear ye shall serve the lord your god and he shall bless thy bread and thy water and i will take sickness away from the midst of thee from the midst of thee what will that mean number one look at all the children of israel from the midst of the children of israel anywhere they were the lord will take sickness away from them somebody say amen take every individual he says he will take season from the midst of us in the midst of us you know ulcer doesn't it's not in the forehead it's inside cancer is not on the forehead you can take picture nice picture and people may not see the cancer it's inside and all those uh, sicknesses that destroy and also the sicknesses they call old age sicknesses affecting the brain affecting the mind affecting the retina behind the eyes they're not visible and you cannot see look at that look at that it's in the midst and the promise of the lord is if you will serve the lord your god it shall bless thy bread i didn't hear amen there i don't want to go too much into the bread the food the food we eat sometimes it's not just what you are eating what you are eating may eat you up it will bless thy water the importance of water in our system so that we're well hydrated and then it says it will take sickness away from the midst of thee if you serve him hear some people say pastor you know what i cannot serve the lord now i say why i'm sick i'm troubled i have this i have this challenge i will not serve the lord now i'm challenging the lord when the lord heals me after the lord has healed me i will serve him he is challenging you that you put him first that you don't put yourself first that first of all you will serve the lord your god and you will seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness after that all these things shall be added unto you serve the lord your god and he will bless you i said he will bless me and take sickness away from the midst of thee i'm serving the lord let's just say for preaching for illustration i discover sickness in my body in the midst of me that others cannot see but i know and feel and sense what am i to do am i to give up service give up preaching give up prayer give up counseling and say <clears throat> madam you don't understand you are coming for healing you are coming for counseling i have some challenges myself and i've told the lord we made a deal that i will stop serving him let him heal me first they say but pastor you know the word of god tell me the word of god you think i know it says you will serve the lord 
یاداش چلنجیز سیکنس دیفیکالتی سادنس آن هپینس شد نو تیک اوی او کمیتمنت و کنسیکریشن in serving the Lord because it is in that serving the Lord He will bless you. He will bless your bread. He will bless your water. And He will take sickness away from the midst of thee in Jesus' name. We know from the word of God the people that had served the Lord. And when sickness came upon them, they pleaded with God. Look at 2 Kings chapter 20. I'm reading here from verse 1. In 2 Kings chapter 20, reading from verse 1. And in those days was Ezekiah sick unto death. Ezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. The people that will take that, the prophet said, I will die. And those who are giving prophecies, national, they spot you out. And they say, I know you are deep alive, and you may not believe this, you may not accept this, but I am a prophet of God. Have you read my prophecies in the newspapers? Have you read that every time I pronounce something, it comes to pass? Well, whether you accept or not, the Lord sent me to you and said, you will die. <laughs> what do you do after that? You know, we need to know our Bibles. We need to exalt what we read in the Bible above the prophecy of any prophet that may come to us. In these days of frivolous text sending, I hope you understand, you don't read every text. You don't read every chart. Sometimes I get some text unreasonable text from people I don't even know. I see the number. This number is not among my regular contacts. And I send in a text. And they are saying God told them to tell me, hold on, I'm your pastor. If you're a member of the church and the Lord wants to talk to me, He'll talk to me. It's not going to come through you. Do this and do that. I don't even know who they are. Normally, I delete texts and chats that I don't know the source they're coming from. I, I think people should have respect for everybody. Respect for our environment. And just because you've got somebody's telephone number from another person doesn't mean that you misuse that and you're frivolous and you're sending this and that. But here is Isaiah. He was not even a careless, unknown man. He was the prophet of God. And he told Ezekiah, set your house in order because you will die and not live. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, Look at verse 3. I beseech thee, O Lord. Remember 
ha, now how I have walked before thee. You must have a life that God, that God is pleased with. You must have a life that will merit, if we say it that way, the goodness of the Lord and the healing power of the Lord. But if you're living carelessly and walking carelessly and, uh, you know, jumping here, jumping there, no time for God, no time for his word, and no time for prayer. And when calamity now comes, God, where are you? And God replies and says, I'm here, but where are you? Where have you been? I've not heard your voice all these years. You're not praying. You're not reading my word. You're not living according to my word. I can see the evidence of the sanctification that your pastor is talking about. Uh, it's because uh, naturally I am weak. Okay. You don't want to obey me. You want me to obey your prayer doesn't work that way. Ezekiah said, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and uh, have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept. So look at verse 4. In verse 4, and it came to pass for before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, verse 5, he said, Turn again and tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people, God, what am I going to tell him? You sent me to tell him that he will die and he will not live. And everybody knows me that when I speak, it's done. It's confirmed. Now you are telling me to go back and reverse what I said already. I said, was sanctified. If he had to swallow his word, he will. If he had to reverse what he had said, he will. If he had to undo what he has done, because now this is God, he will. Are we like that? Are we like I say that you've been doing something? You even thought, here is what God told me to do. Here is what God sent me to say. If the Lord now says, because of the prayer of Hezekiah, the prayer of the leader of the king in the land, the prayer of somebody that came to have attention from God, because of that prayer, go back there and don't repeat what you said before. Reverse what you have said. Are we that holy? Are we that humble? Are we that submissive unto the Lord that we will do exactly what he has said? I keep on emphasizing this church built on the demand of God for holiness. Holiness will make us humble. Holiness will not make us rigid. After hearing the word, after praying and praying and praying, after we pour our hearts out and say, this is the way, walk ye therein, and leaders, people, Members, workers are so rigid that they will not listen to the word of God. And when sickness comes, they think healing is cheap. 
healing is there all the time. Why don't you come back to the Lord? Let him heal the heart first. Let him heal that stony heart first. And let him do a deliverance work that he takes the stone out of the heart. And now you can have an answer to the request of your life. Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Amen. I say, did you pray for him? No. Why not? God told me he will die. So, he should set his house in order. So, why should I pray? Okay. There are people that say, where's the pastor? Where's our Jesus? Where's my father? My own father? I am sick here. And can I get to him? Why? Can I not see my father? My sister, my daughter, don't die in that condition. Pray. If you pray, the Lord will answer your prayer. My brother, don't die in that condition. Where is the pastor gone? Or here is gone to that place, India, to that place, Zambia. It's gone to that place, Cameroon. It's gone to Togo. I'm here at the headquarters. And I'm sick here. I'm lonely here. I'm having a problem here. And the pastor, my father, is globe trotting. Uh -huh. If you're going like that, you might use an insultive word. Be careful. Pray. If Isaiah is not available to pray for you, pray. God will answer your prayer. It says, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. I love that. Say, I love that. You know, God did not have to take permission from Isaiah. I told you to tell him he will die. Now, I hope this does not offend you. And this does not rob you in the wrong direction. I want to heal him. I say, what do you think about that? God never asks permission of anyone. As a final authority. He said he will die. He changed his mind now. He said you will not die. He said you will leave. How about what I said before? What you said before is not as important as the plan of God, as the program of God, as the project of God. I will heal thee, and on the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, and I will ask unto thy days tell me tell me if you can tell shout it if you are sure do you know that God still asks yes to our lives I said do you know that God still asks yes to our lives he has years to life. Listen to this. He has he adds life to years. Years to our life. That's chronological. That means he gives us more years. That means we can say another January to December, another January to December 15, he will add yet. There's another side. He adds life to our years. What does that mean? It gives you that long life. And he also gives you the health span. Health span. That 
the span of your life lifespan is extended and within that lifespan he also gives you health span that you are healthy what's the point if he gave him another 15 years and the all and the 15 years will be full of ulcer and cancer and deafness and dimness of sight of same and um, you know uh, dementia what's the use no he has years to life he has life to our years he will do it for you in jesus name that makes us healthy that's divine health there's divine healing when you're sick he heals you there's divine health he preserves you from sickness. He will do it. I'm looking at Genesis chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 7. Genesis chapter 20 verse 7. It says, Now therefore, restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt lay. And if thou restore her not, no. Know thou that thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die. Thou and all that are thine. That emphasizes. The understanding again, sin brings sickness. Sin brings disease. Abimelech the king had sent for Sarah. And she had taken Sarah to, her, to his house and wanted Sarah to become one of his wives. That was against the plan of God. The project of God, what God wanted to do, and the promise the Lord had given that Abraham will have a child, Isaac, through Sarah. And uh, you know, the king, a man of authority, took that woman, even though she was of age, yet she was still presentable enough, wanted. Uh, to be his wife and Abraham did not have any authority and now sickness came upon the whole family and God said this sickness will kill you and kill all the members of your family only one condition restore the man his wife and I tell you if that man said no i love the woman so much when she came i want pleasure from her i will not restore her but i will fast fasting will not do it i'll call for people who can pray prayer warriors prayer warriors will not do it only one condition repent of sin make restitution restore the man his wife you see the healing that God gives. And this is the first healing in the Old Testament. And this was the condition that God laid upon him. And there are people, they don't want to hear about repentance. Heal me, heal me, heal me. They don't want to hear about restitution. Heal me, heal me. They don't want to hear about restoration. What you have taken unlawfully, restore that. Otherwise, your prayers will not be effective. You'll be praying to seal heaven. In verse 14, verse 14 tells us, And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them to Abraham. Abimelech, so far, so good. But we need to go further. 
You cannot try to misinterpret the command of God. Make that restitution. Right the wrong. Make your way right. And then you do other things. You're very active in this and that. Your conscience is telling you, so far, so good, but you have not done the right thing. Let that wife of another man go back to her husband. That's what the Lord requires. That's what he demands. He wants the man and his wife to live together until death do them part. But now, before death even comes, you're taking her to be your wife. Maybe you have wives already like Abimelech and you want to increase the number in your polygamy. God says, restore the man his wife and he will pray for you. You know something? God will answer when you do the right thing. I can't hear you. God will answer your prayer when you do the right thing. Let me give you an illustration. Somebody has done something wrong and he feels it. Somebody has done something wrong and he knows it. And he's suspecting that I might have known that this is what he did. He's feeling guilty. He's feeling condemned. He's watching my attitude. Does he know? Has he heard? Has he detected that I am the one that did that thing? And then, I'm not talking, um, you know, theory. I'm talking practical, real. It happens. And I can point you to one, two, three, that, you know, happens to. And they come to me. And he comes to me. And he says, Pastor, pray for me. And I'm watching his face. And even the plastic smile in his face, you know, is hiding something there. No problem praying. It will not take me a minute or two. I'll pray. But what do you think about that kind of prayer? That he, the evil thing he has done, he, uh, he does not want to confess. He does not want to change. He does want, not want to turn around. You know, that's, that's, that's not biblical prayer. Another time, I don't know whether they teach each other. Go and do this. And they do that. And after doing that, I expect they will come. And they always come. They always come. And they say, Pastor, pray for me. And I can tell now, this is like one of them. They don't believe in the revelation of the scripture. They keep on doing evil. And they keep on saying, pray for me, pray for me. God does not answer that kind of prayer of a person that does evil deliberately. He does not have the courage. He does not have the mind. He does not have the humility to confess and to say, I am sorry. I will not allow that to continue. But you know, in the case of Abimelech, he restored him his wife. He restored him, his wife, so that Abimelech can have his wife 100%. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, so Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife, and his maid's servants, and they bear children. God will heal you. 
the word of the Lord will heal you. Your response to the word of God will heal you in Jesus' name. We're coming now to point number two. Point number two is the boundlessness of definite healing with Emmanuel's anointing. Emmanuel's anointing. We're looking at Luke chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, and to search at liberty them that are bruised. In verse 19, and to preach, and to proclaim, and to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 20. In verse 20, and he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister. And he sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Verse 21. In verse 21, and he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. The word of God will be fulfilled in your ears, in your life, in Jesus' name. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, it tells us, Luke chapter 4, verse 32, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with Power. The word with power. That's why he sent the word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. Verse 36. In verse 36, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. Any unclean spirit, to maintain any life, they come out in Jesus' name. Verse 40, in verse 40, it tells us here now, when the sun was setting all they that had any sick, the divers, different diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them and healed them and heals you. And delivers you. Now, understand Christ's healing. Sometimes he speaks the word. is healing. Sometimes he laid hands on the people. And they are healed. He doesn't even do similar healing in similar ways. Two blind men came to him. And then they said, Have mercy upon us, son of David. What do you want me to do? That our eyes may be opened. And then they said, Do you believe I can do this? They said, Yea, Lord. They said, Be it unto you according to your faith. Didn't even touch them. Didn't even do anything to them. And didn't even lay hands on them, and they were healed. 
another time a blind man was in the sight in the presence of Christ and the disciples asked who sees the parents of this man or this man that was born blind disciples let's be reasonable after the man have seen before he was born and therefore blindness came on him you know when we disciples when we ask questions we should think through the question we're asking this man did he see that this blindness came on him and he said neither the parents nor the man but that the glory of god may be revealed and then he looked at the man he didn't speak the word another method now he didn't lay hands on him another method now and he made clay and put on his eyes healing blindness in different ways by the same Christ. So let's understand, don't be wedded to a particular method. This is what must happen. If the preacher, if the one praying for me, if he does it this way, according to my expectation, then I believe, uh-uh, different methods, but the same name, the name of Christ, he laid hands on him or he laid hands on every one of them and they were healed i pray the healing of the lord will be definite in every life in jesus name the lord went about you know the verse there's no harm in reading it again acts chapter 10 verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost you see there God the Father is different from God the Son and God the Son is different from God the Holy Ghost that's the Trinity God anointed Jesus, not anointing himself, anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing. How many people? That's why I would say his healing was boundless. The boundlessness of definite healing by Emmanuel's anointing and when you recognize that anointing when you accept that anointing and when you accept that Christ has all power and has the needed anointing to take away your infirmity your disease your sickness the recognition of the anointing, the belief, the faith in that anointing will set you free. They went about with that anointing. And Jesus Christ is still the same. Yesterday, yesterday, yes, today, this century, and forever beyond our time as he went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil he's still doing the same today he goes about doing good they will do good in your life they will heal all that are oppressed of the devil understand not oppressed of god if you are oppressed of God, Jesus cannot come and take that oppression away. That was the same Father. I don't agree with you. You shouldn't have put oppression and 
any kind of disease on this man, on this woman. I disagree with you. I'm going to undo what you have done. Never. The Father and the Son are always in agreement. My Father walketh hitherto, and I walk. There's no disagreement. There's no conflict between the Father and the Son. What the Father does, He does. In fact, He said, Philip, don't you believe that God the Father is in me and I in the Father? And the works I do is not me, it's the Father that dwells in me that does it. I and my Father are one, healing all that are oppressed of the devil, not oppressed of God, for God was with him. And that anointing on Christ will bring a total healing in your life in Jesus' name. John chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 46 John chapter 4 reading from verse 46 so Jesus came again into the Cana of Galilee where he had made the water wine and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum, was 47, when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him, that means the man, the ruler, went unto Christ and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. He was at the point of death. He might have said, no necessity of going to Christ because the son is already at the point of death in our day. At our time, the man will say, the boy is already on oxygen and is gone into coma, is gone into unconsciousness. And the doctors are saying, we cannot treat him anymore. It's of no use. And uh, you sign the paper, will remove the oxygen. But you know the man, didn't accept that. The boy, the child, was at the point of death, and yet he came. Anytime you come, Emmanuel will answer you. Whatever the stage, stage four, stage whatever of that sickness, Emmanuel has all the power. He will heal you in Jesus' name. Verse 48, in verse 48, then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Jesus said, Except ye see signs and wonders, miracles and healings, ye will not believe. You know, there are people that say, Healing, not necessary anymore. Miracles, not necessary anymore. If you have, you've gone to seminary, you have theology, you know the word, and you know how to preach. That's all that is necessary now. All this healing, healing, signs, wonders, miracles, not necessary and there are maybe people over here that might have that same concept 
pastor teach the world pastor be our teacher miracles healing they already have the hospitals they can go to leave all that alone the what but jesus said there are people there are tribes there are nations there are clusters of people they have not believed they have their religion and accept they see signs and wonders ye they will not believe there are some believers in different places that may say there are false prophets right there are false miracle workers right and so if we also come and will demonstrate healing will the people not group us or the false prophets no if you don't have anything up behind the curtain you don't have any power apart from the power of the faith in christ they'll see your transparency except they see signs and wonders they will not believe verse 49 in verse 49 and a noble man says unto him sir come down here before my child die verse 50 in verse 50 jesus says unto him go thy way are you not going to pray go thy way are you not to command go thy way are you not going to make a decree go thy way are you not to are you not going to follow me and go come touch my son go thy way whatever jesus says will bring healing in your body but you know there are people they glue to just one method and this is a delicate situation a terrible situation a terminal situation and because of that they want to be in control of christ of his method go thy way thy son liveth and the man believed the word that jesus had spoken unto him and he went his way go thy way thy son liveth and he went his way verse 51 in verse 51 and as he was now going down his servant met him and told him saying what did they say what did they say exactly what christ had said a confirmation of the words of christ confirmation will come in your life thy son liveth verse 52 he says then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend now you see the man the man expected began to amend gradual they said unto him yesterday at the seventh hour not began to amend the fever left him the fever has left you the typhoid has left you the malaria has left you the feverishness has left you the weakness has left you if you believe that it is done yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him verse 53 so the father knew that it was at the same hour 
not beginning to amend instantaneous at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. Remember, except he sees signs and wonders, he will not believe. He has seen the sign. He has seen the wonder. He has seen the deliverance and the healing instantaneous on the sun. And he believed. Healing brings more faith in the Lord as Savior. Verse 54. In a, sorry, verse 53, it says, The whole house, the whole family believed. Christ still has power. The power of God, He wills. The power to forgive. The power to heal. The power to bruise your enemy. And the power to raise you to life when you're on your deathbed. They can raise you up again in Jesus' name. We come now to point number three. In point number three, the blessing of desired healing after Emmanuel's ascension. Before Emmanuel's arrival, divine healing. After he arrived in his lifetime with Emmanuel's anointing we have definite healing now he went back to heaven he ascended to heaven leaving his disciples leaving the apostles here behind and after that ascension of Emmanuel the desired healing continued will continue in your life your family in our church in our church and not only being done 